What is up, captains and cadets? We are going to do a quick, fun video giving you 10 hot tips to play within Sage Labs. Just kind of stuff I came across. Um, you guys might know a bunch of it already, but let's find out. All right, for you grinders out there, for you guys that are out there every single day playing Sage Labs like eight hours a day, maybe this video is not for you. But for the casual player of Sage Labs, this one might give you a couple tips that you might not have noticed or came across before. Also, I'm going to talk about some of the really cool positive things that are going on with SDUs at the moment. It's a couple changes that have only been made in the last few days. So maybe there is a couple things that you might not have realized so far, especially if you kind of gave up on Sage Labs. So let's get into it. Let's have a good time today. All right, tip number one. This might only be a beyond the horizon problem. Maybe you guys don't have the same problem, but for me, this problem was driving me crazy until I realized an easy, real, super quick fix. Um, so let's just say I'm like checking on a bunch of my guys and stuff like that, and I'm in a super rush. I'm in the middle of uh, um, getting ready for work or I'm in the middle of cooking dinner or something like that, and I come back and I wanna you know check on my scanning fleets. And instead of hitting return to dashboard, because it's nice little fat little arrow right here, I stupidly go and hit this button. No! And then I'm like, ah, and you have to reload into Sage Labs and say Starcom is acting all buggy that day, you know, and it just hits, it says loading game, loading game, loading game forever. It just ha so happens to be a buggy moment in Starcom. And then you're like, oh my gosh, well, I was doing that so many times, like over and over and over again. And I was beating myself up for it. And I was like, why are you so stupid and everything like that? And I, I realized there's an easy, easy fix instead of loading the game up like that. Um, so Instead of going to the um, Star Atlas Marketplace and loading Sage Labs from that, or if you have a little tab on your um, on your browser, I noticed at least with Microsoft Edge, if I load it from my favorites and I hit Sage Labs and I launch the game. Now you old school browser game legends out there, you probably already knew about this trick. But if you load it like that, right? Now you can't hit that button. Let me go even go in further and go to like my mining fleets where you would have. So here's my return to the dashboard. Doo, 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 doo. And then you, you go to click on it. Bam, you can't do it. So you can't accidentally constantly log out of the game by accident. So that was a huge help once I realized that. It saved me a whole bunch of time. Like literally if I was like grinding, it probably saved me like a half an hour a day because I'd constantly log out of the game by accident, not paying attention to what I was doing and have to wait to log back in. So that's tip number one. All right, let's say that you're working on, you know, like your mining fleets that are, or, you know, doing your scanning and stuff like that, looking for SDUs and you're in the middle of it, but then you realize that your dog needs to go out and you go walk your dog or, you know, you have to go to the bathroom, but you don't have any toilet paper. And so you have to run down to the store um, to go grab some toilet paper, but you decide to get a barbecue chicken sandwich on the way back. And so you're eating the barbecue chicken sandwich it spills all over your, you know, your shirt and stuff like that. You have to come home, you have to take a shower, you have to go to the bathroom, all that. You come back to the game. And then you go to stop uh, mining and all of a sudden like nothing happens like you don't see your ships in dock and you realize you kind of have to restart your browser a lot of times i was using you know the refresh button on my browser but i realized that if you hit f5 on the keyboard it does like a hard reset it seems on the you know on the browser game and for whatever reason i feel like it works a lot better like you don't have you don't get stuck at the very beginning with the um, screen constantly saying loading or if it does, it's just a lot faster than hitting the refresh button. Like super fast, I feel like. Could just be all in my little tiny brain, but I, I really do feel like it's a lot faster to hit F5 on the keyboard and then is to hit the refresh button on the browser. And bam, you're right back into the game. That's tip number two. All right, tip number three is for the fellow small peanut-brained people like me out there. Um, for the longest time, I, I've been using the Phantom Wallet. Um, most people out there in star atlas land are using either the soul flare wallet the phantom wallet or their ledger i decided not to use my ledger because i didn't want the extra clicks i had used the soul flare wallet on escape velocity so i wanted to give phantom wallet a little love for the for uh for sage labs i wanted to give that a shot um so forever i was let's just say we exit the sub warping on this guy and forever i've been doing a lot of extra clicking and for i i was looking all over the settings in fan in my actual phantom wallet i was looking all in the settings i was looking all over the place and i was like where's the auto confirm that they were talking about um you know that they implemented they were bragging about on on twitter x i was like ah what the heck phantom and then i don't know why i didn't read you know the, this little notification that pops up but right there in front of my face is the auto confirm so if there's any peanut brains out there like me um you can just go over there you hit the auto confirm and then blam it took me i don't know how long it took me i, th I think a week and a half into playing before i realized that maybe even two weeks I, I don't remember but then boy that man that made everything so much easier 
All right, for tip number four is some positive news on SDU scanning. So if you have those extra small ships or those extra, extra small ships, there is a awesome sub warp fix that they did for us. I didn't realize this. It took me a minute before I realized it. Um, thank you team for fixing it. Um, and two videos ago, I talked about, um, you know, the racing ships and stuff. I wish that they can go a lot farther out so they can scan in like the outer realms where no one's like, you know, really going. And the team seems to, I, I said it for warp, but the te team seems to have done that for sub warp. So here's the warp. I have some extra smalls in there and some extra extra smalls in this little fleet. And so this is the radius I can go for, for warping. But if I go to sub warp, um, you can look at, I could go anywhere on the map. Look at this. I can go anywhere. Pretty much the entire Ooster region I can go with my little tiny fleet. So thank you team for this fix. I love it. My next tip is, I don't know if you noticed, I'm going to click back on that same fleet. I don't know if you noticed how I was able to drag around the map. Now, if you just use like the wheel on your mouse, you know, you can go up and down you kind of lose it. And then you're like, ah, what's going on? But let's zoom out. If you hold down the right click button on your mouse, I don't know if you guys realize, but you can actually like move the map all around. I found this out pretty early. Um, and it was a um, uh, shout out to Andre club Andre on Twitter. But just in case you didn't realize that that helps out a lot. So, you know, sometimes you're like, Oh, that's as far as I can go. Cause that's all I can scroll out. Um, that's what I had thought for a couple days until I caught that he said that, but you can like, you know, scroll all, you know, by holding down the right click, you can move the map and then you can zoom all the way down to that sector. So that's tip number five. Now piggybacking off of the last two tips, um, still on SU scanning. I noticed we're going to go back to that same fleet. Let's, um, we're burning through toolkits pretty quick. Um, with the now that it's 10 times the toolkits to scan so you constantly have to go back and you know restock your fuel kits but they way lowered the cost on how much fuel it takes to sub warp which has been awesome so you can warp like way far away um, on the map and warp all the way back to the beginning with a very small amount of fuel with that said my tip is that you don't have to um, leapfrog a whole bunch of toolkits way out to like one of, one of these star bases far away from your central space station right you can actually just keep all your toolkits right in the central space station this happens to be the ooster central space station right here and you can warp super far away and just come back to your central space station and restock and warp super far away it might take a little more time so it might save you time if you have toolkits kind of close to where you're scanning but it's not necessary anymore you don't actually have to do that you can go you know you still have to watch you know how far it says I have 48% fuel after. So I warped all the way out here and I, I can warp all the way back to my central space station and still have a half a tank of fuel. So you can see that things are working out pretty good for the small fleet. So shout out to the team. Thank you for that fix too. All right, and for a quick commercial break, Eli has been working really hard on all these really awesome animations. And so he made this- um, Subscribe sub animation. Yeah, Go check it out. the one right over there. We're, I'll play it a couple times just so you guys can see. Gotta it. subscribe them all. <laughs> I'm super proud of you, buddy. Thank yeah. you so much for doing that for dad. <laughs> so please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. All right, this was something that the uh, I caught off the Metaverse Nomads they were talking about, and I thought it was actually kind of a cool idea. And the people on Discord, have been discussing it is what the metaverse nomad said um but i don't go on discord so much so i would have missed this if i didn't catch it on there but they were saying um let's just say you're like way out and you know trying to mine way out in the middle of uh nowhere and you have to get back to your um central space station because you need maybe you need more ammo or more food and stuff to keep on mining well instead of having to waste all that time traveling back um you know to your uh to your central space station if you want if you want, you can take basically take your ammo out of your ship, you know, because you always want to go back empty without ammo to your central space station. That way you can resupply your ship with ammo and bring back a whole bunch of ammo. Take your ammo out of your ship. Take anything that's in the cargo out of your ship. Just just actually you can even take fuel if you want and then hit this, you know, so your, your ship is basically uh, you have to have a little bit of fuel in there because you have to be undocked in order to do this. So you have to have a tiny little bit of fuel and then you hit self-destruct. And that'll bring you back. I think it's like 150 Atlas. It'll bring you back. It's the super quick way to go back to the Central Space Station if you don't mind spending a little little bit of uh, Atlas. And then you you know you fill up, and then you have to spend the time warping back. But if if you're crunching for time and you don't mind spending the Atlas, it's kind of a cool little trick, you know. Uh, all right, tip number eight is to keep some charts handy so you can look at them all the time. 
Um, the ones that you see in all my videos that are my go-tos for sure is the ones that Archetype made. Um, I keep bringing this one up right there. How handy is this? Um, cause it first it tells me how, um, the raw resources I can look, I'm like mining carbon and hydrogen at the moment. I know I need 6 million of both. So I could just keep my ships cranking for the 6 million. And then once I start crafting it into hydrocarbon, I know I only need one, um, 1 million 476 of it in hydrocarbon. I need to save some of that carbon in order to, um, craft the graphene right here. And then you can just, you know, reference this chart right here. So I'll, 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 uh, I'll show you some more here. Hold on. So then here's the same thing with the max hog because that's what I plan to craft next. If I have enough time, I would love to get myself a Calico max hog. And then the other chart that you see all the time in my videos is the one that was made by the HNN hologram news network. This, the, this has just been a, I go to this thing, like the second I want to move my ships around for any type of resource, I've been using their map that they made before Sage Labs even came out. This has just been so handy. I, um, so I took a screenshot of all three of those. I keep them on, you know, on my desktop and I can refer back to them anytime I have any questions about where I'm going, what I'm doing, what I need to craft. So, Hey, thank you. HNN. Thank you. Archetype. We appreciate it. And I have another chart, um, to talk about next actually. All right. Tip number nine is actually check the weights of what you are crafting and compare it to the raw resources this way. I mean, the weight, how essentially how the weight works is how much weight that it takes up in your storage so for instance the power source if let's just say you can fit twenty thousand um units in your in your cargo source right in your cargo in your fleet you have you can fit twenty thousand units if you have a weight of two you can only fit ten thousand of these power sources because this is a weight of two um so anything with a two you can only fit half the amount as you could with these um, raw resources which is a weight one all right so check the weight though because at the moment i by the way shout out to star horizons he made this nice little chart right here um you can go to his um twitter x um profile or you can um find this on on my twitter x uh page but i at the moment am crafting carbon and i'm crafting hydrogen or mining carbon and hydrogen and i'm crafting hydrocarbon right now hydrocarbon it takes two carbon and two hydrogen to craft hydrocarbon which is right here so, so that would be, um, if I was just going to take the raw resources back, right. Um, just to do one hydrocarbon, I'd have to, um, take four units back to the central space station and it would take four slots up in my, you know, in my cargo slot. Whereas if I crafted into hydrocarbon, it would only take two slots, right? So four of these equal one of these, but then even further, if I, cause I need polymer for my Mamba X, I can then take the hydrocarbon and turn it into polymer so it's way 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 faster um it saves a lot more room for me to um you know craft everything right there on the site into polymer before i move it back to the you know central space station so it's a little thought kind of like do some math um another one i realized is this one right here crystal lattice i was like oh man it takes so much room in my ships to get it back to the central space station um so it takes I'm like, look at this. A faction crystal is only one, right? It takes um faction crystals and hydrogen to make a crystal lattice, and I need that to make the Fimble Mamba X. But I'm like, oh, that's a five, and these are only ones. Maybe I take the raw resources back to the um, Central Space Station. I craft it there. But it takes, I, I might be getting this opposite, but I, th I believe it takes seven hydrogen and two faction crystals to make one crystal lattice. So the seven plus two would be nine units in your cargo space. But if you condense them and make it into a crystal lattice, those nine units you condenses down to five. So you still save room, you know, by crafting at the star bases before you, you know, haul everything back to the central space station. So you can do some math. You can use this awesome chart that Star Horizon supplied for us and uh, and try to figure out, is it better to craft at the central space station or better to craft at the star bases and then bring it back there? So it could save you a little bit of time, saves room in your ships. Just a little tip to think about, man. All right, for my last tip, I... I needed to take my head out of the way. Uh, I remember to take my head out of the way, at least, um, to show you guys this one. Um, so the team now has um, hit 10 times the amount of toolkits in order to scan for SDUs. This, I believe, is to attack the people that are botting. So now the people that are botting are going to blow through their toolkits if they're just constantly hitting scan all, scan all, scan all. And check this out. If they're botting and they find... Um, let's just say they find SDUs on you know a certain sector and they keep on hitting scan, scan, scan all. Well, that's just a waste of toolkits because there's a two minute wait time once you find um, once you find SDUs. So I would think that a lot of the botters right now are hitting their bots to scan at least every two minutes in order to save on 
toolkits because even if you're botting you still got to resupply your ships which means you still got to bring your ships back to the you know to to um the, the, one of the star bases or central space stations and supply them with toolkits then fly them back out again right and that takes time so i would think that since the people that are botting every two minutes um or since the people that are botting have to wait every two minutes it's a little help for us little guys if we do it manually so let's just hit scan all scan all scan all see if we find any sdus oh we found 10 we found 10 and we didn't find 10 so it looked like on the third one i didn't find i didn't find um 10 sdus which would be this one right here um so now i'm not going to hit those two for at least two minutes right because i don't want to waste my toolkits um you blow through the toolkits pretty fast the way that um, it kind of works right now so oh i must have actually hit on this one and this one because see this has three sdus so it's this middle one i did not find any sdus because it would have said 13 since it said 10. okay so what i would do then is i'm going to i did that a little too fast i would manually do it a little bit slower so you can pay attention on which ships have the sdus but then i would rapid fire on this one right here every single chance that you possibly have to hit scan i would hit scan that way since the bots are waiting every two minutes you have you know an upward strategy to try to beat them out you know to, to try to get that that sector scanned before they can and then they have to wait the other two minutes again and see so it did not reveal so i'm going to wait two minutes for these two since they, they found the sdus i'm going to at least keep it in my back back of my mind to roughly wait two minutes and then this one's 50 seconds so roughly if i you know two scans with this one would be about two minutes and then i can hit all three of them again you know so that's kind of how i thought it would work in our advantage against the bots and if you're a botter and you're just hitting scan all your nuts i would i would wait i would hit scan all every two minutes because that is blowing through a lot of toolkits which means that you have to restock your ships a lot and I'm only helping you out because by you guys waiting every two minutes, you botters, it helps us little guys out that are doing it manually. <laughs> so anyway, I hope a couple of these tips helped you guys out or at least even one. So it wasn't just a waste of your time watching my video. Um, if it did, hit that like button. And if you enjoy my content, I would love for you to subscribe to me so that my videos pop up to you whenever I put one out. Because I love you all, you star Atlas maniacs out there. I think you're great. I think you're awesome. I'll talk to you guys later in the next one. Peace out, man.